this one comes from Playboy Cardi. What's up, you're watching Hive Mind, the most astral show on the internet. My name is Riley Zosner, and by my worldly co-host, Graydon. I've been everywhere. <laughs> Not you, the queen. Travis Scott's Utopia is out now. We sat with it for about a week. We're gonna go through our best and worst lyrics, features, beats, samples, and songs. Then we're gonna give an overall score at the end. Out of 10. All right, before we get into it, make sure you like the video, subscribe if you wanna see more. Go to HiveMindTV.com for our brand new merch. It's on the screen right now. It just dropped last week. Go pick something up. Also, we have a drop with Copes over on his website. That's linked in the description along with our Patreon and our Cameo if you'd like to support us. Or click the Join button here on YouTube and become a member. You get a knife next to your name and extra emotes you can use in the doo -doo 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 chat. Also follow us on TikTok. We got short form content over there. Don't forget Instagram Reels. Instagram Reels too, yeah. And now for the most interesting part of any Travis Scott album, let's go through to the lyrics. <laughs> oh, let's dive in. All right, we're gonna go chronologically, starting with the first song, Hyena. Here we've got, write a show by myself like I'm Chelsea Handler or write a series about my bitches like I'm Kelsey Grammer. So Chelsea Handler wrote uh, the Handler exclusive, or yeah. uh, the, the Handler confidential. Mm -hmm. Whatever it was, gotta hand it to her. She wrote it herself. I got a confidential Handler one time in theater class. <laughs> yeah. And Kelsey Grammer's show is? Frasier. Yeah. Frasier was Kelsey Grammer's bitch? What? I, I think he was Frasier, and, but it was about a lot of the women that he dated, maybe? Frasier's name was Kelsey. His real name in real life. Like, the <laughs> actor's name is Kelsey Grammer, and then Frasier was his name in the show, I think. I don't know. Oh. I don't know anything about this show, but this is kind of funny, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty decent line, and I will say this album starts off super strong. I love this song. I definitely had the impression, like, oh, we're in for something when yep. I was listening to it. We reacted to this, by the way, on our Patreon. We reacted to this on a stream. So if you want to see that, join our Patreon. There's a VOD of it up. But uh, I'm glad we didn't do a review back then. Yes. Because now I have way more to say. And mm -hmm. I feel like I've been able to, with context, kind of understand what this album means more as I've listened to it. It's a mistake I made with the Iraq War. I reacted the first day. I said, go get him, George! Yeah. After about a week or two, I said, why are we... Uh, it's important to sit back for a second and let yourself think. Understand, yep. Yeah. Alright, this is on the second song. Didn't like the way that shit went down at the awards, I admit it. Turned to a beast. <laughs> <laughs> so this is about the Grammy Awards five years ago where Travis Scott's Astroworld lost to Cardi B's Invasion of Privacy for Best Rap Album. And I guess that turned him into a beast. Yeah, for the last five years he's been a beast. And he's also been completely quiet, uh, in part <laughs> because of the Astroworld tragedy, which we will talk about a little bit more later. And also seems like the pandemic. He has a lot of pandemic references on this album, seeming like we're back outside. Yeah, and know? drinking. Yeah, he talks about drinking a lot. And what? Threesomes. Yeah. Kind of uh, pervasive themes throughout this project. Deep. Not a lot of people talk about drinking enough. I'm glad Travis brought it to the surface. Yeah, thank you. Also on Thank God, we've got a quarterback calls, I don't like 12 except Tom Brady. One of two Tom Brady references, I think, on this album. I was gonna say, he loves Tom Brady. Yeah, I think Tom's getting a little cozy with like the hip hop scene in general. I think with the Kardashians in general as well, this could be his brother-in-law. Oh snap, I didn't know he was moving in on the fam. Kim. Really? Tom and Kim spotted out at, what's it called? Nobu. No, the ranch. Um, what's the one ranch? Saddle Ranch. Saddle Ranch, they no were spotted way. at Saddle Ranch. Uh, is them, Bryce Hall, Addison Ray, and Charlie and Dixie D'Amelio, and they were all holding hands in a circle and you're, chanting. You're lying. No, I swear to God. I mean, it is getting crazy out here. I thought it was confirmed he was dating like a 22-year-old Norwegian supermodel. But yeah, but then uh, Giselle didn't like that too much, and so he said, my bad, Giselle, I'll date Kim Kardashian <laughs> instead. Also at Saddle Ranch, they were chanting, free ugly God, so. Interesting. This one comes on the following song, Modern Jam. I like a bi girl on a bicycle. <laughs> this one I kind of like. Yeah. If this album was not so depraved lyrically, and I don't even know if I'm using that word correctly, devoid of like yeah. meaning. There's there no go. like meaning here. Depraved would be like if he was having a threesome with like a moose and like a homeless woman. <laughs> well, that's that, depraved. That's depraved even for you. Yes, exactly. Do you want to explain what this one means? I feel like a lot of people might not get it. Understood. Um, I am happy to do that for you. Sure. I believe Travis is referencing a bisexual woman here. Yeah. Who's a woman whose sexual preferences are both male and female. Sure. Travis, in particular, likes a woman with that sexual orientation to be on a bicycle, which is a human-powered, two-wheeled vehicle. Yeah, he, you can actually see him on one here. He, by the way, is not a bi girl. 
He is a man, straight from from what we can gather, I mm-hmm. guess. Uh, don't know exactly his sexual orientation, I guess. But he is on a bicycle. This mm-hmm. one more of a, some other, it's like, it's a little. It seems like a scooter, seems motorized. Ah, you're right, actually, my bad. Maybe a two stroke, a simple weed whipper engine in there. Something mm-hmm. fun to rip around the hills of Calabasas. Yeah, he's always in the hills. Yeah, Cabo, he gets like four Cabo shout outs in this too. Yeah, this is also on Modern Jam, we've got I got them levitating way off their knees. The way I make it jump, I make it hard to breathe. So I guess we'll start in on a little bit of the Astro World stuff here. Yeah. Because while I do not think this lyric is directly referencing that concert or really any concert, because the way that it leads in with like more context seems like it's I got them levi- levitating way off their knees. The way I make it jump, I make it hard to breathe. Could be like a sexual situation. Mm-hmm. But I think it's a little bit insensitive to use this line yeah. because it obviously can have the double meaning. So Astroworld was Travis Scott's festival that happened about two years ago now. And I'll talk more about the specifics of that later, but uh, 10 people passed away during that festival. It was overcrowded, and there's been much speculation about who the blame should be placed on, right. whether it's the festival organizers, the people actually working the festival, Travis Scott's team. That speculation led to a black and white video of Travis Scott apologizing, as well as a Charlemagne the God interview after that. And a lot of people are hesitant to believe that Travis Scott shows very much remorse for this. I don't know. We'll talk more about that later as it goes on, but this is just one of many references on this album that makes it feel like it could be about that and it would be something that I would avoid if I were Travis Scott. It feels just like insensitive to put in these things that could be read that way. That's what I was going to say is it feels like the lyricism pre-Astral World has just carried over like without a change at all. Yeah. And I think an event like that as an artist should have altered just how you write and phrase things. You don't want to come at things with this vague approach that could be interpreted as insensitive at all. This isn't necessary to get across what he's trying to say in the song, although it may be just nothing. You can just say it in a way that couldn't be misconstrued. Okay, we got Tizo's feature on Modern Jam. He said, oh, this the remix. Oh, this the remix. Now, I wanted to include this one because Modern Jam features a beat that was the original I Am A God beat. Okay. From Thank God For Drugs, which was Kanye's album prior to Yeezus and ended up becoming Yeezus, the I Am A God instrumental is what is used to construct this song. There's stuff built on top of it. It's fleshed out a little bit more, but the bones of this song is I Am A God. And Travis Scott also adopts flows from I Am A God and Send It Up for his verses on this song. And then when Tizo says this, oh, this the remix, it made me think like, could Tizo think he was getting on an I Am A God remix (laughs) 10 years later? (laughs) Who knows? (laughs) But it is like legitimately a remix of the original I Am A God. And I don't know, we'll also talk more about the Yeezus inspiration on this album, but that was just a question that I had. I was gonna say, you could put Tizo on five different tracks and he might have the same thought. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. This set of lyrics comes from the following track, My Eyes. I replay them nights and right by my side, all I see is a sea of people that ride with me. If they just knew what Scotty would do to jump off the stage and save him a child. The things I created became the most weighted. I gotta find balance and keep me inspired. This is the only moment on the album where Travis Scott seems to directly reference Astro World yeah. and the most emotional song, or at least aesthetically yeah. emotional song. The problem that I have with this is an overarching problem with Travis Scott as an artist is that it just feels like everything relates back to him right. and his journey. It's about how he's perceived. He wants to be perceived. He even calls himself a superhero after mm-hmm. this. He wants to be seen as somebody who would save a child. But then also it's about, now I got to stay inspired. Like right. the thing I created <laughs> did bad things, but now I got to find a way to balance my life and keep myself inspired despite this. That's not the problem here. Yeah. It's like, it shouldn't be about your journey as an artist. It shouldn't be about the way you're perceived, any of that stuff. It's literally just about people died. Also the line, if they just knew what Scotty would do. Well, you've had some time to let him know. And also this being your album coming back, if you just want to be that insular artist who's not out in the public, like you're not good at public apologies, put it in the music. And instead it's like a few stanzas and then it ties back up with, well, I got to find my balance and stay inspired. And then it goes on to say, I stand on the stage, I give him the rage, no turning it down, can't tame it, can't follow it. This is directly after. Yeah. And he's just saying like, can't tame it. Yeah. Like, 
like, you can't tame the rage. Sorry. Like this this is what I've created. It's like, it's too big. I can't, whatever. And it's like, you can't be the helpless protagonist at at the center of your hurricane. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like at the end of the day, you do have some power, some control over that. And you also have the ability to speak and say things that can make it safer in the future or can express some remorse or help the families of those people find closure, all that stuff. It just feels like directly following your one actual reference to the tragedy with you can't stop the rage it's just not like it's tasteless to make like a whole track that is heartfelt for him to appeal to fans let's say that weren't there then for them to go to the next show knowing that he has those feelings that's like going to be subconsciously incorporated and going to create a safer environment instead of like glossing over a quick two lines of like we're still turning up and then it follows up by saying this oh yeah can't forget this line he says made a cast of my dick so she never going to cheat. This is the same verse. Yep. This is right after he says, if you knew what I would do to jump off a stage and save a kid from dying, then it ends the verse by saying, made a cast of my dick, so she never going to cheat. Yeah. I, I will say I didn't know you could do this. Make a cast of your dick? Well, people, you know, OnlyFans people make fleshlights and dildos shaped like their ding-dongs and hoo-hahs, you know? <laughs> Merchandising. Yeah, I mean, it's a smart idea, but you shouldn't be coming up with brilliant business ideas during your verse about the Astroworld tragedy, I think. That's true. Now, if... That's kind of a slippery slope. Okay. Well. But if your significant other had sex with Travis Scott's casted cock, right. would that be cheated? No. Oh. It's not a person. Well, it's a casted cock. I mean, who knows what <laughs> their sex toys are shaped after. Like, you know what I mean? It could oh, be anybody. True. Like, it could who? be George Clooney. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, we don't know that. Do you think there's one guy who's, like, casted cock has been sold a trillion times? And he's kind of, like, nameless. He's not, like, a porn star or anything. He's, like, the Gerber baby for dildos. Ah, uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> probably it could be somewhere somewhere probably he's probably bigger. so proud it's probably bigger he, than the he's sitting baby back too. and he's like wait chill <laughs> chill probably is like bigger than the whole baby yeah <laughs> oh, oh my god i don't think so i don't think that's like the average can't stop the rage <laughs> can't stop the rage i, I feel like we just kind of did the same like we went into a serious conversation and ended up by talking about gerber baby oh but no one gets hurt at our shows that's true no but yeah there are enough people <laughs> where you can remain silly <laughs> that's true <laughs> this is my pick for worst lyrics on the album this comes from god's country hundred thousand pack the fans Got them jumping with no hands. Need more spaces where we jam. So this is particularly insensitive because of the Astro World tragedy. There's like conflicting reports about how many people were there, how many yeah. people were supposed to be there. I know the venue changed capacity multiple times. Originally it was 50,000, then it became 20,000. People say there was maybe 72,000 people there. Whatever it was, the idea of naming that number and then saying, got them jumping with no hands, which I know does come from the original God's Country. Okay. God's Country was a kind Kanye song yeah. featuring Travis Scott that was supposed to be on Donda, I believe. But regardless, then says need more spaces where we jam. And I get that that's a space jam reference. That's what it's supposed to be. <laughs> right. But again, it's like so on the nose. It's just saying like, oh, there should be more space because obviously I have too many fans. It's like, that's not the issue here yeah. is like the show running aspect of it. It just feels like a very blase way to talk about this when something so serious is at hand. Yeah. And again, it's like, it's almost like a flex. Yeah. Which is just not the right tone at all to have like, I brought the rage. It's like, chill. We get it. It's also like borderline. It just feels evil. Like I'm not trying to get into the satanic conspiracies and yeah, it just feels dark. Yeah. Like, and there's a lot of this album that feels that way to me. And especially upon like looking closer. Yeah. And like we've said, I mean, a Travis Scott album has never been about the lyrics, right? but I'll, I'll get to it later. Okay. This one comes from the next track, Sirens. Meet me at the Festi VL. Why are there so many references to your packed out shows and festivals? Like it just feels, just come on. The alarming thing to me is that maybe we're working with a very one dimensional character here that despite what goes down, it's a festival in his room. It's a festival when he steps outside, he's raging at the McDonald's. He's raging at the show. He's raging at the courtside with his baby mama. It's like he knows three things. Yeah. And that worked to elevate him to a really high place. But when it came time to reflect, we've kind of just kept it in fifth gear yeah we're just retreading the same (laughs) water here basically but yeah i mean it's from sirens they're outside it come with it inside now your venue we gotta resize he's like yeah now you gotta resize your venue and everybody's like 
That's not. A, yeah, people died. That's not cool, man. That's not cool. At no. All. That's like if you wrapped your car around a telephone pole and you were like, "Damn, that car is fast, huh?" Yeah. People would be like, "Jesus, man, that's not good." That's like if you wrapped your car around a telephone pole and you're like, "Guess it's time to get rid of the telephone poles." <laughs> They're in the way. This is from Meltdown, and this is the man himself, Drizzy. Heard your new joint? It's embarrassing shit. You talk to the cops on some therapist shit. You act like you love this American shit, but really, the truth is you're scared of the six. six, six, six. There's been a lot of speculation. Now we're getting into some lyrics that actually there's some substance. Sure. Even if it's like some controversy <laughs> bait, yeah. at least it's something. You know <laughs> what I mean? People are speculating that this is about ASAP Rocky or this could be about Pusha T. I've heard other theories as well. With ASAP Rocky, I think it's like that he wraps himself in an American flag and there's something to do like with his bodyguard or something. Okay. That's like the next line, I don't know. You're educating me. Whatever it is, the more likely thing is that it's about Pusha T because in an interview, he said that he can't, something got messed up with his border thing. He can't cross the border to Canada mm. and he thinks it has something to do with Drake. He like kind of <laughs> hints at that. And so then he's like, you act like you love this American shit, but really the truth is you're scared of this six it's like it's not that he can't come it's that he won't because he's scared yeah he did get stuff thrown at him when he was there i like the idea of being like faux patriotic just because you're scared of going to another country you're like oh it's just so much better here and people are at like a beautiful hotel in toronto they're like no man it's really nice it's very similar too and he's like no, it's not the same. <laughs> Di with different money. I don't know. <laughs> and being scared of Canada is yeah. so funny. Like, yeah. uh, you're just scared of Canada. That's why you won't come. You ever been to Jacksonville, Drake? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is both of our pick for best lyrics on the album. It comes from Drake. Same verse. She asking for bread for her parents and shit. I told her I don't got no cash. And she said she could wait on a rack on some Arabic shit. Yeah, it's kind of a mouthful. It is tough to say and is more clever than I first realized. Same. And I know Twitter has been running with this one, so you guys know. She said she could wait on Iraq on some Arabic shit, two Arabic countries. Kuwait. And Iraq. Yeah. Very clever. Drake does not get enough credit for shit like this. And I'm yeah. glad he did get credit on this one because I didn't even catch it. Very awesome. Still the six god here. Since V not around, the members done hung up the Louis. They not even wearing that shit. So this is a Pharrell diss. Uh-huh. And a reference to Virgil. Was the head of Louis Vuitton and then passed away. R.I.P. And now Pharrell has been appointed the head of Louis V. Pharrell, obviously a close associate of Pusha T. Uh -huh. And then it, it continues. You love Lucky that Vogue was suing because I would have been with the Wassas in Paris and shit. So Vogue sued Drake and 21 for doing a fake Vogue cover for the promotion of their album, Her Loss. <laughs> what a great run. Drake was not at Fashion Week because Vogue was suing, I assume. So maybe he wasn't invited. Pharrell and Pusha T were there. Yeah. And I guess they're lucky that Drake was not there because he would have pulled up with the Wassas which apparently is a Toronto gang. Yeah. And so that would have been uh, to harm Pharrell and Pusha T at Fashion Week, I guess, which seems like a big venue for that. Seems it's a tough, tough spot. Seems tough to sneak in your... But your, if anyone's going to do it... I guess... It would be Drake. It would be Drake, but... It would pull up. It's a, also an acceptable place to wear a ski mask. West Side Gun wore a ski mask. See? Think about that for a second. It's Maybe true. it's the perfect crime. I would love that documentary to come out. Many have said, this man's seen here with gloves and a mask is Drizzy. He wouldn't be his own shooter. It would have been the losses. Maybe they alley-oop him the pistol or something. I don't know, man, how gangs work. What do I look like to you? I don't know, like a upstanding gentleman? Exactly. I don't right. roll with the wasses. I'm sure I mean, they're yeah, nice but I mean, yeah, they could be upstanding gentlemen as well. They probably are. Not if they're trying to come after my guy, Skateboard P. Yeah, I guess that's... Also, Pharrell produces a song on this album. I know, it's, it's, we'll get to that. Yeah, it's confusing. It is confusing. Whatever. This is also for Meltdown. Okay, this is Travis now, though, saying Chocolate AP and Chocolate the V's. Got the Willy Wonka factory V's. <laughs> <laughs> this, people are saying, could be a reference to Timothy Chalamet, who is the new Wonka, and also the new boyfriend of Kylie Jenner, <laughs> who has a child with Travis Scott. I am here for this beef. If it's a beef, then it right now, he is cooking it on too low of a temperature. You know what I mean? I don't think the, the beef is even going to cook. Yeah. Because you're just mentioning Willy Wonka talking about your jewelry. Almost promoting his movie. Honestly, Wonka might get more people in the seats because of this one. It does know. look bad, though. And if you're going to force my hand and tell me whose side I'm on here, which I didn't plan on doing, so <laughs> right. since okay. you're forcing me to do that, didn't do that. I will probably take Timothée Chalamet. 
Okay, but you would much rather... Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I thought you were going to pick Travis for some reason, so right. I was ready for with a response, but I'm going to say, yeah, you'd rather see Wonka than Circus Maximus. I mean, let's be honest. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were planning on watching Circus Maximus before this review, just to, like, have some extra context on this whole rollout, and we read, like, one review, and we're like, oh, it's just him, like, performing on a mountain or something. It's so. like an adventure montage, and at one point, Rick Rubin, like, walks him to the top of a mountain, and Travis asks him, can I still rage? Yeah, we're not going to watch that. No. I refuse to watch that. <laughs> why does Rick Rubin do that sort of thing? Like, why does he he's do not that? wearing shoes. Yeah. And, and he he's also is yeah. thinking in like 2155. I, I guess. There are like quotes from Rick Rubin that I, I do really like. And sometimes I like listening to him talk. But ultimately, he does also do things that I'm just like, why... Why would you walk Travis to the top of the mountain and have him ask you... Wim Hof. Uh, what about Wim Hof? What's that mean? It's probably what he's doing. You ever hung out with someone that's doing Wim Hof? I don't even know what that is. It's like a deep breathing technique. Oh. <sighs> did Phil, like that kind did of Phil Jackson do that? It's a, Yeah, it's a Phil Jackson, mushroom head kind of people in Calabasas that are bohemian do. You right, know, yeah. you want to do some Wim Hof after this? I don't know. It just sounds... Just breathing. It supposedly can get you high. Eh, I'm good on it. Okay. I got stuff to do today. All right. Ooh, this one comes from Playboy Cardi on Fiend. Okay. It's a uh, Fiend, Fiend, Fiend. It just kind of goes on like that. Yeah. Honestly, I almost picked this for best lyrics on the album. It contended for mine. Yeah. Cardi's got a way of, and I'm not even doing this as a bit. He's got a way of like reducing everything. Yeah. You know, he'll say four words and you get it. He's yeah. like that really high friend you're with that's like, man, this is like marbles. And you're like, exactly. Yeah, like he never talks and he says one <laughs> sentence and it's like the truth. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, exactly. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. A yeah, I never thought about it like that. <laughs> a lot of you sense know? in there. Rick Rubin could take a note or two from Playboy Cardi. Say less, fam. <laughs> oh, I thought that was Tyler Childress in the background. Yeah, it's actually uh, Justin Vernon, a.k.a. Bon Iver. He's crooning here saying, infected with your vaccine, this ain't critical. Let me vibe with your green eyes. Now this, a lot of people on Twitter have speculated that it's about the COVID-19 vaccination. Oh, it definitely is. I mean, what other vaccine are we talking about? And that green eyes being a telltale sign of uh, shots when you're a kid. Brown eyes turn green if you get polio, chickpeas, malaria, all those diseases. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of coming out here or coming to the surface, confirming a lot of people's beliefs that Justin Vernon is a backwoods hick who doesn't believe in modern medicine. And I got to admit, I kind of relate to him on this one, you know? Yeah. Because, I mean, listen, as time has gone on, like, I definitely was, you know, I was pro-vaccine. I got vaccinated. And since then, I think we all can admit that there have been side effects, like, yeah. we all tried gay stuff with our friends. Like, yeah. and I w had no gay bone in my body before mm -hmm. that. I was a straight guy. And I've been drinking a lot more. We all tried, st we all had a bunch of gay thoughts all of a sudden. We all tried stuff with our childhood buddies and stuff. <laughs> stuff we would never do. It's yeah. like, I don't know if it turns you gay or if it's right. like a half, like, you know, maybe it just like makes you bi curious. I don't know what <laughs> it is that's in there that did that, yeah. but it obviously happened. And to it, was like, it was like a light switch for a lot of people. Pretty Most much people. Every, almost yeah. everybody who got it <laughs> tried stuff never had even a notion to try any of that stuff before. Correct. And then they tried it. Boom. Like right away. Yeah. It's like everybody started doing that. So uh -huh. I think it's time that we all kind of start to speculate a little bit, at least have a little bit of cynicism about the next vaccine that comes out. Because I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Right. I'm saying it is a side effect and I wish yeah. we didn't just turn a blind eye. Where is Fauci? Yeah. I haven't heard from that guy in a year. I, last I saw him, he was at Sprinkles. That's impossible because I am there every single night. <laughs> Since the vac since I got the vaccine, of course. This one comes from I Know. I got 20 bitches sucking like bisons. We posted this one on Twitter, and I just said, does anybody know what this means? And we have gotten to the bottom of it. Thankfully. In part because of people responding to it, and in part because of my own reflection on this one. My yeah. own kind of like something that nobody said on Twitter that I think is an important double entendre here. So, yeah. one, apparently bisons don't chew their food. They use their tongue to wrap around tufts of grass and just suck it back. Oh. And and also, they drink 30 gallons of water a day. Yeah. I mean, they're big body, so it makes sense. But Biggest mammal in North America. Bisons be sucking. So Travis Scott has 20 different girls that seem to be sucking as if they were bisons. Correct. Almost like they're at the watering hole, but here the watering hole is Travis Scott's cock. Yes. Then also, people were saying, like, if Travis Scott had a bisexual son, like a bi son, he might be sucking. This is what people said on Twitter. Me, I think it's more like 20 bitches sucking, like, 
by like it's by sons like the I sperm hate that. <laughs> the sperm that's leaving like yeah. you know people say like she swallowed my kids I don't like when people say that but uh-huh. I'm just saying like people say it she gobbled my babies yeah that sort of thing mm-hmm. it's like oh she took the kids and swallowed them or whatever honey I swallowed the kids but it could be by sons like see like it could he be is a- the type of person to think that all of his sperm is sons too right it's not there's no daughters yeah. even though he has a daughter but it's like a triple entendre and might yeah. be the best lyric on the album now that I'm thinking about it I like it because I love uh, in Invoking the majestic wild beasts of North America in general, and I think rap and hip-hop music could use more of that overall. More buffalo? Eagles, the mountain lion, the rare but sought-after black-footed ferret. You know what I mean? Mm. All these creatures are beautiful and they invoke a better, more pure symbol for America. Sawbaby definitely touches on most of those, I think. Mm -hmm. A lot of sea critters, though, and I don't like the ocean. Ah. Okay. Next lyric, please. Our next lyrics from 21 on Topia Twins says, Slow stroke. Perfect. From the back, I've been drinking walk. I feel like we just included this one because it's just like, feels like a old school 21 Savage verse. Yeah, he's slow because he's high. And that's perfect because a lot of people, a lot of guys out there jackhammering nowadays, that, that no. People don't need that. No. You sometimes, I mean, there's a time and a place it calls for it. Sometimes you want a, you know, high intensity thing going on. But honestly, it's more about the, the motion. You got to get a nice stroke going. And that's something, a lesson that a lot of guys nowadays could learn from 21 Savage. A partner can really appreciate something that takes time. Yeah. You watch a man build a sailboat in a bottle. That's fucking hot. Yeah, that's sexy. That's old school sexy. Yeah. He's doing it with tweezers and old cedar and cherry wood from his granddad's coffin mm-hmm. that he dug up. I mean, that's beautiful. For instance, who's hotter? Okay. What? Oh, go ahead. Do you point to yourself? <laughs> no, no, no. I was going to was gonna talk about two other people. Go ahead. Okay. Jeff Gordon or Phil Mickelson? Right, Phil Mickelson. Because Jeff Gordon goes fast, okay? But Phil Mickelson takes his time, hole to hole. You know what I mean? Hold a hole. Well said. No one wants to watch someone make something on a computer. Right. No Too girlfriend fast. wants to watch her boyfriend crank 90s and destroy 12-year-olds on Fortnite. It's too fast. It's too fast. Too fast-paced, yeah. But you will watch someone play an old-school RTS space explorer that takes up to 30 hours to build one ship. Yeah. Although that's still on a computer, and it kind of contradicts my original statement. Sure. You get my point because you followed along because you're a good listener. Another thing people find very attractive listening exactly next lyric this one also on topia twins but from travis scott got two twins they top tier that's my favorite fetish so here travis scott is saying that his fetish is having sex with twins and that's a lot of people's fetish and one that i take a bit of an issue with because the incest the incest exactly but the twins are not going to reproduce in this scenario unless they are twins of the opposite sex where things can get sketchy. Just from my own personal level, if I met two sisters that were into kissing each other and wanted to see each other naked, I don't know. I, I don't know how I'd feel. You say, I don't know, though, as if you're leaving the door open because you <laughs> Well, might... I don't know. It, I don't. See, I do know. I don't know. And I'd say, eh, eh. Not my thing. Probably out of intimidation. There's part of it that's just intimidation. <laughs> it's just like, if they are doing that, I'm not their what guy. What am I? I'm not their guy. <laughs> <A little laughs> you know? sex I'm, on. Yeah, come on. I'm not their guy, you know? There's plenty of guys out there who are perfect for you. Big buff guys or crazy guys or whatever. I'm rich. Not, yeah, rich guys. Dan Blazarian, I'm sure, likes that oh, sort of yeah. shit. Me, I'm just a, I'm, I'm a YouTube. One at a time. I'm a YouTube guy who draws cartoons and shit. I don't know. You, know, you don't want that with me. <laughs> he also says favorite fetish here, which makes me think that Travis's bag of fetish shit is deep. At which least there's more than one thing in there. Yeah, which again, like occasionally we get these gleans into a more rounded person that contains multitudes instead of just this rage monster who wants to be seen as a robot superhero. The glimpse there is is a, it's a flash in a pan. It's quick. Yeah. Because you don't really, I don't even think a lot of people are, are, are thinking that. But if you said tie me up and gag me, make me your little gimp sandwich or something, it'd be like, oh, totally. there's I a finally, lot going on here. I finally feel like I would know him. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> I would have something to relate to. Yeah, and I do not know this man. I don't know him. <laughs> this one is actually, we believe to be wrong on genius, but it says this shit get thicker than a bitch with stripes, LSU Tigers. But he doesn't say Tigers, he goes LSU Tigers. And then it like cuts to like an ad lib that's all reverbed or mm-hmm. whatever he does. But it seems to be a reference to Livy Dunn. Seemingly. It's kind of, I don't know. We can't confirm that. But also it's like, what do you mean this shit gets thicker than a bitch with stripes? Stripes make you appear larger. 
Everyone knows that. Oh, vertical, yeah, yeah, vertical yeah, yeah, makes okay. you appear thinner. Totally, yeah. Horizontal stripes will make a bitch look thicker. Oh, okay. And then LSU Tigers. Tigers have stripes, but also do their jerseys have stripes? Maybe their baseball jerseys. She plays gym- gymnasium <laughs> or whatever. What do you say? What does a gymnast do? She plays gymnasium. She plays gymnasium? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She do the flip. She doesn't play baseball. She plays gymnasium. So that's a strange reference. Shout out Baby Gronk, though. Let's move it on to the next lyric. And this was my pick for worst lyrics on this album. It comes from Circus Maximus. Travis says, I might still eat McDonald's, but don't think I'm a Ronald. <sighs> he did have a McDonald's meal. That's what makes it worse. It's like a callback to a corporate sponsorship you did. It'd be better if he just never collabed with them. And it's like, oh, it's, you know. But what does he mean? I don't think I'm a Ronald. Then he's not a clown. Oh, yeah, clown. And that rhymes. Okay, I guess I, uh, I'll i take it. It just feels so cheap, and it almost feels like he is like this with corporate McDonald's. But I, I don't think so. I think they cut, didn't they get rid of their sponsorship with him because of the Astroworld tragedy? Right, but like, why is he still like, he's like looking out for the brand. Is he? Or is he just saying something funny? He's putting it in there still. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you're loaded. Your life is opulent, robotic, Calabasas Hills life. Like, talk about that. Well, he does talk about that the rest of the album. Okay, well, I didn't need this little sidebar of like, I still got my fam over at Mickey D's. I think he's just trying to say that he doesn't just eat fancy food all the time. Like, he's he's still like down, he's humble, you know, whatever. Yeah, I hated it. I will say one thing. You know who's a bigger clown than Ronald McDonald? Go ahead. Ronald Reagan. And Ronald DeSantis. And Ronald Dino. No! Actually, no, no, he's not a clown. Sorry. I just was trying to think of other Ronalds that I knew. Ronald Jeremy. Not a clown. He's a freak. He's a circus <laughs> freak. Pogo penis. <laughs> <laughs> Next one comes from Schizo, and it was uh, one that a lot of people sent us. I got so much around the house I had to hide mine. I had to hide mine. It's kind of how he says it. Yeah, so people thought it said hive mind. Right. Which it might, but as for right now on Genius, it says hide mine, and it makes way more sense. Totally. That it says hide mine. Yeah. Instead of hive mind, but... I appreciate that he kind of like said it in a way where it could have been. It's open for interpretation. Absolutely. So that that can lead people to, you know, our army to kind of be excited about the mention. Like they're like, wow, like look at, they did, they said the thing. Those guys did it. Travis Scott said the thing about our YouTube guys. Yeah. The yellow guys. So. Thanks. So thank you, Travis, I guess. Thank you. Okay, this next one is from Schizo as well. Seen the top 10 pen list. I don't even know how they could pin this knowing that I'm the human Pinterest. Now, this one hits the ears real rough. Uh, it does. Saying I'm the human Pinterest is a rough one from Travis Scott. I'm the human Pinterest. Now, I get what he's saying here is that he's the inspiration for every, because that's like what Pinterest is right, used it's for. Mood it's board. mood boards. It's like, I am the inspiration for everybody, and I'm not even on the top 10 pen list, which, again, lyrically, never been known as that. Yeah, Travis Scott's not known for that. He's known as a musician. A, a curator, composer. a composer, yeah. all of those things, way more than he is a writer. So calling him a top 10 rapper is just not, there's no list that should have Travis Scott there. Yeah, and then just kind of proving it two lines later. How am I not on the top 10 pen list? Watch this wordplay. I'm the human Pinterest. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, and uh, this one is kind of the most talked about Travis Scott line on the entire album, which says something. This is from Schizo, and he says, I'm loyal, bitch, I got yay over Biden. Yeah, um. The presidential race. I think that that's kind of over. I don't think anybody's gonna vote for Kanye for president anymore. Probably not. Voting for Kanye for president is insane, let's be honest. Oh, I'm, I'm you know? with you. As an artist, I get it, but obviously, these past couple years has proven that guy should probably not be the leader of a country. I will agree with you. I'll go out on a limb, face all the ridicule. And also Biden, though. I mean, like, whatever. Also, Love him. Eh. He's active, goes for bike rides. He had cocaine in the White House, first president since the 90s, assumably, to do that. Son's got a big cock. Um, Is it? Oh, yeah, it's nice. I haven't seen it. It's good looking cock. Maybe yeah. I have seen it. Marjorie no, no, no. Taylor Greene held it up right in the Senate House. Like this or like? <laughs> like on a picture. Oh, a picture. Okay. She said, who's yeah, cocks this? Said, uh, <laughs> yeah, I thought you were doing like a lever situation no. with Hunter Biden's cock and uh, yeah, it seems like a bad place for it. She said, who's cocks this? And Newt Gingrich said, mine! And they said, sit down, Newt. Isn't Newt dead? Yeah. You got a little dick and you're a ghost. Get out of here. <laughs> Is he dead? Oh, I'm going to feel bad if he's not dead. I not really. I don't really care. His name was Newt. His so. name was Newt. Whatever. Yeah. yeah, this is just funny. Um, you're saying you're so loyal to Kanye. Obviously, 
you just picked up all of his scraps and Rory made an album of his. Kind of feel like the puppet for Kanye in a moment where Kanye can't really say or do what he wants to do. No, he's not, or choosing not to. At least yeah. he's not. He's not choosing to be in the spotlight right now. But also the album features Drake and Kid Cudi. And Bilbo Baggins. Is Bilbo Baggins on the album? I think so. Well, there's a Game of Thrones sample, not a Lord of the Rings sample. Oh, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. it was a Lannister. This one uh, from West Side Gun on Lost Forever. Fashion Week, I almost tripped two bitches. I almost tripped two bitches. Yeah, he was front row at uh, the Vo- or the Dior show. Sorry, at Fashion Week. That's a kind of a cool, fla- cool way to flex it. That's what I was that, gonna like, say. You know, it's, it's pretty like, sick. It's like my feet are out because I'm front row. I could have accidentally tripped two models. You know? Yeah, that's like at the finals. I tripped LeBron. It's like, oh, the only place you could do that sitting on that hardwood. Westside Gun did his thing on here too. Like yeah. he kept it real, just how he would normally do a verse. It's a great moment. Like he, yeah, he didn't really like switch it up to try to appeal to people on a Travis Scott album. He no. just did his thing, which I think is sick. Ah, this next one comes from Tedros on K-pop. This ain't some Lil Yachty. We gonna fuck till we see sick. But he says it like, this ain't some Lil Yachty. We gonna fuck till we see sick. Yeah. I don't like picturing him in sexual scenarios anymore. Really? Seems creepy and dominating and... I will say this. Whatever the idol did to my perception of the weekend, John Denton's video with him really repaired. He seems like such a sweet, nice guy. I don't know. I don't know what it is. He invited a sweet, genuine YouTuber from the UK, John Denton, to just come to his show and just they hung out for half an hour. Him and his wife and Tedros himself. I don't care if they're Korean. We're gonna make a tsunami. Oh, this verse is, is yeah. loaded with just yeah, that's true. Plug my nose, and I I never want to meet the man. I do. Oh, I don't. I, if, if I get the opportunity, to take your mom or something. Don't bring me along. Cause okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the whole thing. I'm gonna You're, do the one of those. Really? Yeah. You would get in his face like oh, that? Oh yeah. What really? Why'd you do that? Okay. You blew it. You ruined Sam Levinson's fine career. See, but I feel like you've got to start separating just a little bit. Like that was a TV show. It's not like he's Tedros. It's almost like you're- He's in his house. It's almost like you're giving him too much credit as an actor. Like, you believed him. It's my bad. It's almost like you're saying he's a good actor right now. He's a bad actor. Then why do you believe that he's like that? I can't separate movies from real life. It wasn't a movie, it was a TV show. I watched it in one sitting, so it was a movie to me. <laughs> <laughs> this one comes from Future on Telekinesis. Flyest on the Earth, so I had to name myself a planet. Pluto! Now, I got a huge problem with this one. Go ahead. And please. it is a technical problem. It's science. Pluto's not a planet. It's a dwarf planet. And I wish he had said I had to name myself a dwarf planet because that would be more scientifically accurate and would hold up. I think as we go into the future, we should start caring about these details a little bit more. Oddly enough, in this song, too, when Travis Scott comes back in and says, I can see the future, says that like three times, I'm like, that's kind of silly. Yeah, well, the song existed because, right. again, telekinesis used to be Future Sounds, which was supposed to be on Donda, and it's another scrapped Kanye song that became a Travis Scott song. The original featured both Travis Scott and Juice World, and then Future was added to this version. So the hook, I can see the future, whatever, that existed beforehand. Yeah. So Future was just added to it, but I agree, as a first time listen, it does come off corny. Whatever, great verse by Future though, wow, really shines on this. Seems like someone who's super toxic and knows how to rap, which is like a combination that I feel is palpable. SZA on telekinesis. SZA says, I still want to be with you, trust me. I know that's insane. I'd rather fuck on you than fuck on lames. Genius here says that this is about Drake. Now, SZA and Drake previously had a relationship like way back in the day. True. And that kind of came to light over recent years. Like it wasn't really talked about and then it was like brought up by Drake in a song, I believe. I don't know if it's about that, but it's funny that Genius said it. I just think this is like, you know, it's classic SZA. That whole verse is fantastic. It's so cool and it gets very like, as with like all great SZA verses, which most of them are, it feels like very personal. Like it feels like shit that actually happened. It's a perfect ending to this song. Last track of the album, Till Further Notice. This is 21 Savage who says, I was fine with you being one of my hoes for show. Oh God. She said she's seen us be in somebody's goals. What are those? 21. Uh, I like it. It's funny. I almost <laughs> picked this as my least favorite feature. It just doesn't feel like it should be on this song. Yeah, it it's is got strange. like James Blake crooning, and then just all of a sudden Twenty One Savage. It just feels like on um, Spin for You, whatever that song is yeah. called on Her Loss, the like romantic one. His cadence is just not. It doesn't work. It's like the same cadence you're saying you're gonna kill people Slow that you're dancing. just like all of a sudden being like talking about your relationship. I just it's the same cadence. I want something to be a little different, you know. Something about this bar like does portray Twenty One's 
attitude pretty well yeah, to me. I feel that. She said, we're somebody's goals. What are those? 21. Like yeah. That. <laughs> so, like, he doesn't understand. <laughs> yeah, and, like, a goals is, like, the internet thing. Yeah. Like, oh, you guys are a couple goals. And yeah. he's like, what are those? I'm a killer. But he definitely knows what goals are. I he grew know. up in the UK. Right. I mean, he watched tons of football. <laughs> so. so, yeah, how could we forget about this one? This is the last lyric we've got. Travis says, I've been bumping more Coldplay the world cold as shit. Now, I'm a Coldplay fan, early Coldplay, True. Obviously, obviously, but uh, I just think it's funny, like, in this, it almost implies that Coldplay is sad music, and, yeah. like, while it can be, they also have, like, sky full of stars with the chain smokers, you know? It could be anything. Yeah, I think it's just more points out to me that when Travis even uses wordplay or tries to do something, like, clever, it is just on the surface level. He's like, oh, what's yeah. a band that's got cold in it? Boom, been listening to them, because the world, it's it's cold as it's shit. It's cold as shit. Like, it is just so one plus one. Yeah. Overall, yeah, Travis Scott, lyrically on this album, is the worst part of the album. Yeah. Almost just in the negative space. Of yeah. there just not being anything there when there should be. And when there are things there, they feel very uh, brash and insensitive. At the very least, they seem insensitive. Mm -hmm. Let's get on to favorite and least favorite features. Because it's not to say that we didn't enjoy some moments on this album sonically. Of course. So what's your favorite feature? My favorite feature is... Is SZA. SZA on telekinesis. Yeah. I love that whole song. I think like the toxicity of future and the way he flows leading up to SZA's kind of like vulnerable moment in that verse. Something about that whole song works really well together for me. Yeah, melodically it's fantastic yeah. too. Yeah. Your favorite feature? My favorite feature is Tizo Touchdown on Modern Jam. And it was between that and Drake for me, mm -hmm. but there's something about the way Tizo comes in, especially because that song, while it is in some ways one of my favorites, it also feels so indebted to Kanye that I am very bored by the first half and that it saves the song yeah. and makes it a highlight. It is my favorite moment on the album is when Tizo comes in yeah. because it is so zany and out there. It's unhinged. I, I saw somebody on Twitter compare it to A.V. Terror from Animal Collective. Yeah. It feels like an 80s circus performance. It's to like, me, I get Bowie. Yeah, I get some David Bowie. Yeah, on, yeah it's just like Wine outside. Like, yeah. Oh, it's so like glam and ridiculous and just so colorful. I absolutely love it. It's my favorite Tizo feature ever. And that's saying something because of the West Side Boogie song. Right. Damn, baby. And your least favorite feature? I think we agree that it is Kid Cudi. Yeah. For me, it just was super boring. There are a few moments in this album with the features specifically where it does just feel like they walked in the booth, did it, and then left. I wrote down yesterday as we were making notes going through it. It's like you go into the studio and when you go in with Kanye, he's like telling you and mapping it out how you're supposed to feel and do it. Travis is just like running around the room. Yeah. You're like, what should I do? And he's like, ah! <laughs> and you're like, okay, go, go in the booth. I just felt like Kid Cudi's inclusion there, that song is already like a slog. Lo yeah. Love is just not, it's just pointless, yeah. you know? And then when we went to read Kid Cudi's lyrics on it, I was like, oh no. Uh, he yeah. says ragerfied. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, no, no, no. I considered putting Dave Chappelle here. Right. I think his inclusion on Parasail is gross. Yeah. I'll just say, Dave Chappelle and Travis Scott, two massively talented and influential individuals who have both done wrong in their recent careers and both seem to have a problem with remorse. Yeah. I think Dave Chappelle's a very smart guy. He's obviously very talented. Some people say he's the funniest man alive. But I think when it came time to maybe just say sorry and- he don't down. Educate, he doubled down and has been at the side of other people who have done wrong more than in recent years he's been at the side of people who seem to really need it. With trans people, you know, a marginalized group of people who he decided to, instead of identifying with, doubled down and caused way too much transphobic discourse with the way that he acted and showing up there as like, oh, you got you fall, you get back up. It's like Travis Scott didn't fall. Right. You're almost claiming like your own mishaps as like things that have now bettered you in the future and people should respect you more because you did something wrong, never apologized, incorporated into yourself, Travis's found inspiration yeah. from it. Like that's like, ah. it leaves a bad taste in my mouth for sure. It's just like nothing happened to Travis Scott. Yeah. Something happened to Travis Scott fans. Yeah. And it feels like in that moment, it's like something happened to me. 
Yeah. It's like, no, nobody's going to, you don't deserve people feeling bad for you. Yeah. That's just not what it is. Or at least not predominantly. Mm-hmm. Because I understand how a tragedy like that can can traumatize you. Sure. As the central figure in it. Yeah. But it's just not about you. Are you on to beats now? Yeah. So favorite instrumental, what do you got? I got God's Country. Okay. And we both like a couple songs on this album to me that just sound like great Travis Scott songs. And I learned that, you know, God's Country is a rehash of a Kanye beat. So is everything else I look into into this album but that one specifically is just so haunting with those little vocals and it just has the simple rhythm to it if i am just gonna give in and picture travis scott as this dark evil rager that's the atmosphere i want him in yeah 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 i do like that beat my favorite is fiend yeah because it just carries an entire like we did get a new cardi voice i'll say that we got a new cardi voice i love it it's at least interesting i thought i thought it was young thug when i first heard it i didn't know who it was but that beat really like like makes that a highlight on the album where there isn't much else, you know? It yeah. just is that production really elevates that song. Yeah. So, what's your least favorite? I think we agree here. Okay. Circus Maximus? Yeah, Circus Maximus. P.U. Stink in a pan. Circus Maximus is literally black skin heads right. light. It doesn't have the, even the same dynamics. It doesn't have the punch of it. It just has the same exact pace, same exact flows on it. And it just is so boring. It just trots along the entire time. Like yeah. the only interesting thing about that song at all is the weekend's inclusion, which I think is a better melody than his inclusion on K-pop. Yes. And also serves as the only aesthetic difference between Black Skinhead and Circus Maximus. But that's really all that I can say positively yeah. about that song. It's like the most boring. We've literally heard it before. All right, so let's talk about samples. Yeah. There's a fair amount of samples on this album, not a ton. What were some samples that stood out to you? There's a bunch of interpolations that he does. Obviously, there's all the Kanye ones that he does. He interpolates backseat freestyle with that shout out to his Eiffel cock. Eiffel Tower, yeah, he poked her with the Eiffel, yeah. Yeah, mm. um, so that was kind of clever. There is a Game of Thrones sample in okay, there, yeah. which I thought was pretty cool. It's uh, a Lannister always pay is his debt. <laughs> that's what it says? Yeah, well, that's the name of the track. Oh, You okay. wouldn't get it. Um, yeah, I haven't seen Game of Dragons. Thrones. Dragons. <laughs> Take right. it seriously, Riley. Sorry. And maybe my favorite sample on here is the featuring of John Mayer's guitar. Oh, John Mayer plays guitar on this album? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, he does. I feel like that was not talked about. He's there. At least his name's there, and it's the pic- It's his picture when you click on it. Okay. And there is guitar in the song. My favorite sample on this album comes on my eyes, mm-hmm. and it's a sample of the Japanese house's song from this year. Yeah. It's a 2023 track that gets sampled. And that song came out like a month and a half ago. Which is crazy. Definitely like the most prevalent sampling done on this whole project. Beautiful. That's a whole atmosphere of the song. Basically. Yeah. I do love that palette though. Oh yeah. It is like so beautiful, so serene. It feels like liquid. Yeah, it feels like you're underwater, but on a different planet. And it's not water, it's like liquid methane or something. Yeah, something else. For me, my favorite sample was the inclusion of Maggot Brain, the speaking part at the end of Hyena. And as an optimistic point of view, starting the album, I was like, okay, we're gonna get this unhinged future funk album. George Clinton's vocals are on it, and then you get that sample at the end, and then you get Modern Jam, which feels crazy and campy with Tizo in there, and then it all dissipated, and I was let down. But I love that inclusion of the sample. Mother Earth is pregnant for the third time. Well, y'all have knocked her up. What does that mean? Oh, I mean, that album's so weird. That's the intro track on that album, 1971, Funkadelic. One of like the most cursed, haunted funk records of all time. Like a band member's family was like murdered during it. George Clinton was losing his mind. Like the album covers someone's head buried in the dirt, like screaming. And there's all these weird cryptic messages on there. People thought they were like worshiping Satan to be good at funk. I mean, you forget that the guy wearing bedazzled onesies playing like slap bass with afros were still associated with the devil which I love and also I mean probably emboldened a bunch of the conspiracy theorists about Travis Scott with the inclusion of that as well so (laughs) mother earth is pregnant for the third time 
do you knock up Mother Earth? You know what I mean? Your dick would have to be as big as, I don't know, let's say the Eiffel Tower. Right, right. I guess that makes <laughs> sense. That brings us to songs, right? Yeah, it brings us to songs. What is your favorite song on here? My favorite song is Telekinesis, and it's carried completely by the features. Yeah, Future and SZA, huh? I love the atmosphere that's there, but again, those spaces are filled out so well by like what feels like a super classic Future verse. It counts so much money as skin falls off. It's getting peeling, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then SZA, she doesn't want to fuck on lame. She wants to fuck the devil she knows, which is Drake. Well, maybe. Maybe. We, allegedly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we could hope for it. I mean, it would be exciting. And your favorite? My favorite is I Know. And there were a lot of songs in contention for me. Meltdown was one of them. Great. My Eyes was one of them. Mm-hmm. Fiend was one of them for a second, just because it's so exciting. Sure. But I ended up with I Know because I feel like it is just the most tight, compact, doesn't feel like it goes on any new adventures. A song I would have loved to see worked into a live Travis Scott set. It's just kind of like existed in his world already. And it's weird that it's out of place a little here. Like that track comes up and you're like, oh, this is kind of a relief. (laughs) I know, I know. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I feel like he also follows that theme though. Like he has really good hooks in the center part of this album. Mm-hmm. Like he has that one. The Topia Twins hook is really, really good. Mm-hmm. And then he has the weekend's little inclusion on the bummer, Circus yeah. Maximus. Especially that part of the album. Because to me, it starts really strong and has a couple ending tracks that are really strong in that middle part. I don't know, but there are good hooks in there. Yeah, see, I feel like the middle part works for me, but then like that section up until the very end is- yeah. awful. Like, that is, like, where the album fails completely. Yeah. Speaking of that, worst track. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's love. So easily. The most annoying song. And I know we just got done praising him for a couple hooks. That is, like, the worst hook I've ever heard him speak. Yeah. She gave me love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, long time. It, like, truly annoys me when yeah. I hear it. It's fucking annoying. There's songs that annoy me that are still, like, melodically strong that are just like too earwormy that is just like shut the fuck up like who let him do that my least favorite is Parasail for a lot of reasons that I already mentioned I think Dave Chappelle's inclusion is tasteless but I also think it's one of two points on the album where Travis Scott kind of like fakes deep yeah fakes like here's my sorry song and in this case he pulls in Dave Chappelle another big figure who has been inspirational to a lot of people and so he uses his voice and then he pulls in Young Lean who sings sad songs and is a a kind of a cool figure to bring in for the smallest part ever. (laughs) And then Travis Scott just like mumbles and it's supposed to be like him floating into utopia after this tragedy that somehow happened to him, even though it didn't. It feels like the most pointless inclusion and it feels like it really, really zeroes in on how unable Travis Scott is to truly reflect, which I will talk about in my full like thesis of the album or whatever, but that's my my take on it is Paracel is kind of the worst. I think K-pop, Circus Maximus and Love are all right there with it. Yeah, I agree with those. Those are our best and worst. I do want to do two things really quick. I want to talk overall about the album and then give our scores. But before we do that, I want to read off every Kanye stealing moment on the album. I have them listed. Go ahead. I have, thank God, sounds like FML from Life of Pablo, also mixed with Marie I Am Drunk, one of his own songs. (laughs) Modern Jam, like I said, I Am A God Beat, also with some Send It Up flows. Del Resto has a coldest winter interpolation. Yep. Circus Maximus is just black skin headlight. <laughs> this is not Kanye, but on Schizo, there's a part where he uses basically Kendrick's King's Dead flow. Yeah. At one point, which is just odd. Lost forever. No more parties in LA flow. Kanye's, oh, he funny and disrespectful and literally uses the word respect. There's many times where he copies the flow, but also copies either the word or a word that rhymes with the word. He uses the same rhyme schemes in the flows. It's like, he's not really doing a good job of hiding (laughs) the inspiration, you know? It also has the drums from Real Friends on West Side Gun's part. Love has the new Slaves bass line. It also has the same sample as uh, Numbers on the Boards by Pusha T and Buffalo by Tyler the Creator. That's just cool. That's not like, I'm not saying that's like taking from anything. It's just like interesting that it's there. Also on Love, he uses the send it up flow for imagine my world of misogyny. That part. Yeah. Yeah, that's my list of those. Yeah, I mean, there's a ton of it. Feels like scrap metal Kanye. Kinda. Yeah. Jesus was a very forward thinking and futuristic rap album in 2013. And Travis Scott played a role in that. He was a programmer on that album and aided in production. A lot of people say that it was kind of born out of Travis Scott's early sound. Mm-hmm. And so I'm not saying that he's not responsible for that sound at all. But in 2013, this was very very futuristic in 2023 
it feels like he wanted to make it sound futuristic, but is it anymore? Yeah. We've seen 10 years of music built out of Yeezus. Yeah. So now it's like 2023, it should be futuristic in a different way. And say what you will about Kanye West as a person, but he's a compelling figure at the center of the album. Yeah. He says a lot of crazy shit on that album. A lot of it almost made it not work for people because yeah. it was in contrast to this very futuristic and exciting production. You had some of the dumbest lines of all time, but those are the things that are evocative. Those are the things that make Kanye Kanye. So I feel like what Travis Scott did is accidentally reveal that when you put Travis Scott at the center of Yeezus, it's not as compelling right. because what do you come out of this album feeling like he said? McDonald's. Threesomes, drinking, pulling off in the hills, and raging. Yeah, literally. <laughs> now, this is not that different for Travis Scott. He's always been known as more of a producer and orchestrator, mm -hmm. kind of the way Kanye is, but without much of an intimate focus on him as a beat maker, the right. technical side of things. But now the world was finally looking at Travis Scott to say something, and he said nothing. And when he did say things, they came off as insensitive. And to me, the biggest offense of those moments is taking on the voice or the whole palette of the song sounds like someone that we know to be very vulnerable, who's Frank Ocean. Yeah, My Eyes is the one time he addresses the tragedy directly and... Does like the exact same vocal processing as Frank. It's almost like, oh, here's a space where I know everyone's like down to be intimate and down to cry and feel these emotions. So let me just occupy that space. I told you yesterday, it's like if you told me to go up in front of a bunch of people and to give an inspirational speech, instead of doing it in my voice, I just went up and started talking like JFK or MLK. Yeah. It's like he's just putting on someone else's clothes and hoping to be heard the same way they do instead of like doing it himself. It's like when Melania used Michelle Obama's actual speech today. Yeah. <laughs> because Melania doesn't have anything to say as the first lady. Yeah. <laughs> so who did? Michelle Obama. Right. I'll just use hers. Yeah. She's a powerful woman with something to say. People you know, liked whatever. it the first time. <laughs> yeah. And people liked it the first time. It's like that's what he did. And I think that's also what he did here to appear futuristic and interesting yeah. and kind controversial. Kanye West was very controversial when Yeezus came out. It was like almost scary. Yeah. You know? And so what is Travis Scott going to do? He's going to adopt the palette of an artist who did that successfully in the past. Yeah. That's the most frustrating thing to me. And I would be pissed if I was Frank. And it's really soured that song for me. I know you like it. I yeah. like how it sounds like on the surface, yeah. but of course I do. That's like the trick being played on me. Yeah. And the cadence he takes too in the beginning. Roly poly on my wrist. Like it yeah. sounds like Frank would say. Roly poly on my wrist. <laughs> the saddest thing about this album is that it feels like Travis Scott is incapable of introspection. Or at least expressing it through his music. And any attempt to appear introspective feels like he's borrowing from or leaning on another artist. And it just, it turns out Travis Scott's just not a very good actor. Yeah, seems like a guy who made like a couple hit action movies. And then it was like, all right, he's gonna do a character in this new one. And everybody's like, ah, oh, no, just throw him through a wall again. <laughs> like, that's what we liked the yeah. first time. Now, Utopia is fine to listen to. That's proven by our reaction to it the first time. Yeah. You can watch us react to it live first night it came out at midnight. We liked it. And I think a lot of people liked it. A lot of people still like it. What it means for Travis as an artist is disappointing to me and borders on dark at yeah. points. Like, it really just feels like we found out there isn't a real guy there. That's how it feels to me, at least. I agree with that sentiment. I don't like what I found when I looked deeper. Overall, if I had to give this album a score, I'd probably give it a 5 out of 10. After first listen, it was a 7. Yeah. I was like, a little crowded. That's all right. That's to be expected. Five years, it's got a few throwaways. But I thought, like, cut down. The best 12 tracks on this are really good. And then I went back and listened, and that 7 has gone down to a 5 as well. Yeah. Yeah, it is my least favorite Travis Scott album, at least since Rodeo. Mm -hmm. Or, well, I don't mean it like that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I like Rodeo, Birds in the Trap, and Astroworld more than this album. Same. I think there are songs on here that are bigger highlights than those on Birds in the Trap, but just what it means as a whole album and how kind of, like, creatively bankrupt it <laughs> feels to me, it drags it down below that one. Yeah. So, yeah, that's our take on Travis Scott's <laughs> Utopia. Glad we could agree, buddy. Yeah, we don't usually agree <laughs> no. on these, but I'm, I'm glad we do agree. Yeah. Yeah, brought us together, if nothing else. What do you guys think about it? Let us know your score, your best and worst for every category down in the comments, and uh, let us know what album we should do next. I know there is a Drake album coming out soon. Supposedly. Supposedly. So we could do that. Thanks so much for watching. Other than that, make sure you like the video, subscribe, all the stuff we said at the beginning. Check out our merch, HiveMindTV.com. It's a new drop. It's our favorite clothes we've made, so please go check that out. And Graydon, go ahead and leave these people with some advice to leave or live their lives by. A life, if at all well lived, was long 
long enough. All right, this has been iMindTV. We love you, appreciate you, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.